Okay, so again, we're looking at this probably most famous form of a linear equation. There are three linear equations we'll be working with. Uh, this is my favorite of the three. I think it's the easiest to use, and you'll see why when we work with the other two. Um, it's also named slope-intercept form because there's two variables in it that it gets its name from. M in the equation is the slope part. Where do you see the intercept in this equation? It's the B. And it's not just any intercept, it is the y-intercept. And it is actually the place where when we're working with this equation, and we have the equation and we're trying to make a graph, we start with the b. We start at the end of the equation. So let's turn our papers back up and we're going to try to graph two of these together. Let's take what we know from this, and I really apologize with the blurriness of my camera. I have sent in a request for them to come and look at it. But this reads y is equal to 1 over 4x minus 1. We don't always need to pull these out and write them, but let's do it for this one. What is our slope or our m in this equation here? It's 1 over 4. And we do not read that as 1 fourth because the 1 is our rise and the 4 is our run. So this isn't a part whole relationship like a fraction would be. It means the rise is here and the run is here. That's why you will not see these written typically as decimals. We all know the decimal for this would be 0.25. But by seeing 2500s x, that doesn't tell you easily what your rise is and what your run is. And what we need is to know that. What is our b in this? And that's where we start. We're going to look at the y-axis and put a point at negative 1. Our goal is to get at least two points on this graph so we can draw a line between them and that way we can make the graph of this equation. We're gonna use our slope and this point to find the other one. Do you remember me telling you yesterday my, my little kid idea of an elevator? Yeah. And you have to go up or down first and then you can walk across wherever you're going? Yeah. That's because we start here. And we're gonna do our rise first, which is one and we're gonna run across how far? Yeah, so we're gonna end up at four. Now before I graph this line, I might put another point on this graph, but I also wanna step back and think about, in my equation, is there a negative sign in front of the slope or is it a positive slope? One over four is positive, does it make sense that it looks like my line is going to go this way then? Is that a puff, puff positive? Okay, so if I want to go and put another point on the graph, I can go back to my original point and I can take the elevator down this time. Because we say rise, but we really mean up or down. Anything that can go up on the y-axis could also go down, right? How far would I go down then? And I would run to the left this time, four. And now I can draw my line. This is what your ruler is for. You don't want to guess at your straight line. So as we continue to work with our linear equations, we're also going to be producing a lot of tables. And in this table, I want us to do what we were practicing yesterday. And let's, let's put in the table the points we found. 
We started off with our y-intercept of 0, negative 1. What are the coordinates of the second point we found? It moves to the right 4, and then does it rise up or down? So it's 4, 0. And this point would be negative 4, negative 2. We'll come back to using the table later, but the table, this x and this y can replace the x and y in the equation, and it, it completes things, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But today our focus is looking at the equation, making a graph of that equation, and then pulling the coordinates off of the graph and making an x-y table. Let's do it together with number two. Number two reads y is equal to negative x plus two. If we're starting at the end, we're starting with our y-intercept, which is two. On the y-axis, it's gonna go right here. Just real quick, thumbs up if you all know why I put that point right there, where I got it from. Okay, picture this equation as a map. This is our first point on the map. The slope is gonna tell us where to go next. The slope is invisible here, sort of. What do you see in the place of the slope? I see a negative sign, and if there's no number there, what does that mean the negative number is? Yeah, so in this case, our slope is negative one, and what's its run gonna be? It's also going to be one. That's the only way we can have an invisible something in front of that x is if it equals one. So that means that the rise and the run are the same thing. That means I can rise up one, but am I gonna run to the left or to the right? It's left this time because it's negative. If you look here, that negative tells us that we're going to have a nice negative line, as slope dude would say, right? So I've gone up one and to the left. I can also go down one and to the right, and that's going to also give me another point on that line that when I graph through it, it's going to be negative. So let's go ahead and put our line through. We always draw arrows on both ends to show that line continues to go on and on. And let's put those three points we found in a table. If I start with the one on the top left, I go negative one comma three. Hey. Bless you. The point we started with went zero, two, and then the lowest point we graphed is one, one. So I want you to use the clues that are in the equations for three and four to find what the graphs will look like and to find x, y tables. And we'll come back together in a minute to see if yours looks like mine, okay? 